This video is about how to use the JavaScript drawing palette for Wiley Plus. There's a companion PDF that goes through everything I'm going to be talking about in this video. We recently upgraded and enhanced the drawing palette for chemistry courses in Wiley Plus. You no longer have Java downloads and plugins that you need to add to use the drawing palette. The drawing palette uses JavaScript, which runs natively in all modern browsers and operating systems. First thing you'll notice is that you don't open up with the palette, you actually have this edit button. So if you do a drawing problem question, you're going to have an edit button. You click the edit button and the palette will open up. All the buttons you're used to, all the functionality you're used to is really the same. It's just running natively with JavaScript. So quickly running around the palette, you have your selection tool, your delete tool, your bond tools, your bond line chain tool your charges, your reaction arrows, your electron flow arrows, your pre-drawn templates, your atoms, undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, and zoom. And we'll go through each of these individually in this video. So the first thing we're going to want to do is draw bond lines. So we grab our single bond tool and we can just start drawing molecules. If you get to a bond and you want to add a methyl or ethyl, you can just click on it instead of clicking and drag and it'll add that in at the proper angle. So I'm just clicking and we're getting those added in there. Now if you want to create a double bond, there's two ways to do it. You can highlight a single bond, click, it'll turn to double, and you can just cycle back and forth between double and single. You will not cycle to triple bond. To do the triple bond, you're actually going to have to grab the triple bond tool, highlight an atom, and add the triple bond or with the triple bond tool selected highlight a bond and click and you can click it to the triple bond. Double bond you can also grab that and highlight an atom and drag to get the double bond. So once again to add the double bond with the single bond tool highlighted you can just click on it. To add the triple bond you actually have to go grab the triple bond tool. For a bond line you can just draw, click and drag like you've done before. So click the bond line tool and click and drag across to get the bond line as long as you want. You can use a scroll to increase or decrease the size. So if you want to get more carbons into your drawing picture, drawing frame, you can do that by increasing or decreasing the size. And you can also use the zoom for that. So the next thing we're going to want to do is add atoms to our bond lines. So there's three ways to do that. I can just click an atom or highlight an atom. Sorry, not click an atom. So highlight an atom and then in the keyboard type O and it switches to an oxygen or N and it switches to a nitrogen. You know, whatever atom, you can just insert it that way. If it's one of these over here you want to add and you want to add it multiple times, the best thing to do is probably to come over here, click the oxygen, and let's say you want to add oxygen here, here, here. You can do that that way. If it's an atom that's not on the peri um, not on the template, you can click the periodic table and then whatever atom you want to add and add it that way. So once again, if you want to add an atom, there's multiple ways to do it. You can just with the single bond line tool or the bond line tool highlighted. Highlight an atom, but instead of clicking it, just type in the oxygen. Notice the lone pairs are added automatically. And if I click out here into white space and type oxygen, I can click in a water molecule. If I type sulfur, I can put in a sulfur um, hydrogen disulf dihydrogen sulfide. Uh, if I click in nitrogen, I can put in an ammonia and so forth. So you can also put atoms out into the white space by just putting in your cursor and typing in whatever atom you want. I want a sodium, I put it there. So lots of ways to add atoms. Notice as I was mentioning the lone pairs are already added in on the oxygen, the sulfur, and so forth. So you don't have to add in lone pairs. You don't have to click to add them in. And they automatically change as you go along. So if I put in the negative tool <clears throat> to make this OH minus hydroxide, it automatically moves to three lone pairs. Now let's say I accidentally put in too much charge. So remember I had a water molecule and let's say I wanted to make it a hydroxide but I accidentally overwent and made it into a two minus. To get it back 
to the one minus, you actually go to the positive tool because you want to increase the value from negative two to negative one. So you use the plus and minus to go up and down with the charges. So if I want to make my sodium plus, just make it plus. Now, I want to move atoms around. This looks bad, I want to move them around. So go up to the selection tool here, click on the selection tool, and just highlight an atom, and then you can click and drag it wherever you want. So I can drag these ammonias, the SH2, the hydroxide, the sodium, wherever I want. I can also click on an atom and move it around. Now it's going to move it with the bonds attached. It doesn't move the entire molecule. So if I click this atom, it moves that atom and the two bonds attached to it. So if you want to move the entire molecule, slightly different process. You take click the rectangle tool, select the entire molecule, and now you can move it. You move it by highlighting an atom and click and drag, or highlighting a bond and click and drag. Do not use this green thing. You may think this green ball is to click and drag, but that actually is to rotate the molecule around. Don't try and grab the green box because it'll just disappear. So once again, if you want to move an entire molecule, click an atom or a bond and move it around. If you want to get rid of everything, I've drawn a lot of stuff, I can just highlight everything, then hit the delete button and move it. Now occasionally you're going to need to add to do a copy and paste. So I'm going to go to a different problem where you, you would normally have to do a copy and paste. So once again, I have to edit. Here, this is a mechanism problem. So in, to complete this problem, when you get to it, you would have to draw in the product of this reaction and draw in the mechanistic errors. But what you may want to do is to copy and paste this rather than redraw the entire thing. Sometimes you have a big molecule and you need to redraw it on the other side of the reaction arrow. So what you want to do is highlight the entire thing. Even though there's buttons up here for copy and paste, they tell you to use the keyboard shortcuts. So for copy, it's Command C or Control C, depending if you're a Mac or a PC. And for paste, it's Control V or Command V. So I'm going to copy, so I'm on a Mac, so Command C, that copies it. And then I can paste by Command V. Once I paste, once again, to move, you have to highlight an atom or a bond and move it. Now, occasionally what's going to happen is when you copy, it's going to put the structure very close to this, and they'll actually connect together, which you don't want. So the best thing to do, the best practice, is to highlight what you want, do Command-C, Control-C to copy, then just click in the palette to unhighlight that molecule and paste. And that would mean even if this molecule came right on top of it, they're not going to connect together so you can move them around. So that's how we copy, paste, and move. Highlight the entire thing, Command C to copy, click to unhighlight the molecule, Command V to paste, and then grab an atom or a bond. As long as that green box is all around it, you can always move it by at, grabbing an atom or a bond to move it around. All right, the next thing we're going to look at are reaction arrows. Let's assume that this reaction arrow wasn't there and we had to put it in. So you're going to click this tool. You have a choice of resonance, equilibrium, or regular reaction arrow. And then we're going to draw in the reaction arrow. Now, if you click and drag, so I click and I drag, I get the reaction arrow. When you click and drag, you get the reaction arrow. If you just click, you get the plus. So that tool gives you both the plus and the reaction arrow. That's why it's plus and reaction arrow shown. So a click is a plus, a click and drag is a reaction arrow. Whenever you're doing a problem and you have, let's say, two molecules that you need to mix together, you always need to put a plus in between them. It will grade them wrong without that plus. So that's how you add the plus. You take the reaction tool, er, reaction arrow tool, and you just click to add the plus. If you have three molecules you're adding together, three molecules are ion, you need to put pluses between the first and the second and between the second and the third. So make sure and remember how to use the plus tool and the arrow tool. The next thing are your reaction flow arrows. So down here we have 
the reaction flow. You have the single barbed radical reaction and the double barbed regular reaction. So we're going to click the double barbed and what we need to do is we need to draw an arrow from this oxygen lone pair over to this carbon with the bromine on it so that we can then break off the bromine. Now initially you may have trouble so I'm grabbing the oxygen and I'm trying to draw the arrow over and it's not working. You have got to make sure you don't grab the oxygen you click on the lone pair and then you can drag it over to, to the carbon to make it break. So one more time, you click on the lone pair, and sometimes it's hard to do, you know, you may not get it on the first time, and then drag. If you're having problems and you can never do it, you can never do it, just click the atom. So don't click and drag, just click the atom, it'll get really big, and then you can easily grab the lone pair. So once again, click the atom, and then as soon as I click on this lone pair, which is really big, it brings me back to the regular screen with the arrow I can draw. Now, the first version of the arrow that we've drawn there goes from the lone pair, and then it seems to hover out in space, but it shows a dotted line showing the connection. If you highlight the arrow in green and click it, you can cycle through the two versions of it. Both of these are graded um, correctly. So what it's showing you is that the lone pair is going from this oxygen over to this carbon. That's what that first version with the dotted line. But if you just click the arrow, it'll extend all the way out and then we can finish it off. Now, the other type of arrow you can draw starts at a bond instead of a lone pair. So if we start this arrow at a bond, you don't really have to expand it, it's very easy to start it there, and then we draw it over here, we'll also see that dotted line. But you're gonna have three click-throughs. So you have from here, the so it would draw from this bond, let's say this bond was a double bond. We'll just quickly make it a double bond. So when we draw that arrow in there from this double bond oops, over to that carbon. This is not a true mechanism but I'm just showing you the functionality. Initially it's got that little small arrow like before and it's got a dotted line. You can click through and you're going to have three. The dotted line going from this carbon showing this carbon to connect to that carbon then you click and it's a dotted line from the other atom of the double bond going to that carbon and then it's going out there. Currently it will accept all three is correct because on the other side you're going to draw the product which will show you um, that you know the correct regiochemistry. So this basically shows you the, three, the two types of regiochemistry. This carbon atom of that double bond to here and if you click one more time, the dotted line goes down here to this carbon atom to there. And then it fully expands like you would normally draw. So if you were drawing on a written homework or written test, you would just draw the arrow like that. And you can expand it to that. So you can cycle through all the arrows. But currently it accepts all three of those as correct. So that's our basic drawing palette. You have the drawing tools here, your bond lines, reaction arrow, charges. You have your atoms up here. Redo and undo are the most common ones you're going to use. Um, the cut, copy, paste don't work. They just tell you to use the keyboards. Um, then you have the zoom in and zoom out. So you can zoom in, zoom out um, with that. But you can also do that with a scroll, which is a lot easier if you have a scrolling mouse or a scroll tool. Uh, these three tools, you'll never use those, so just ignore those. The open, uh, the new, the open, the save, you probably won't new use. The new, if you've drawn a bunch of stuff and you just want to start fresh, you can click the new. But if you do that on a problem that has pre-drawn structures, so this had pre-drawn structures, they're gone. So you don't want to click that new button unless you're really sure about that. As I mentioned, there's a PDF explaining everything I just went through, and we're going to have more videos explaining the JavaScript drawing palette. Thank you.